minus Wiggins. Rebounding from yet another blown lead the game prior, the Dubs picked up the pieces for an 11th win in 14 games by dominating Washington in the nation's capital. Making up for the loss of Andrew, Moody stepped up without showing a single sign of rust. Keep it here for more on Moses, as well as the most in-depth rap you'll find of the Warriors' most recent dub. But just 11.2% of you watching are subscribed, so if you haven't yet, hit the sub box. Andrew Wiggins is out for personal reasons dealing with a family matter, according to Steve Kerr, which means the man Dub Nation's been collectively pleading to get minutes in Moses Moody was forced to be given that opportunity as the product of Arkansas's and NBA champion replaced Wiggins in the starting five against the Wizards. Despite being thrown into the fire after previously being out of the rotation, Moody didn't show any signs of rust whatsoever. The ankle breaker from Pods on Mitchich featured in my last Warrior video was legit, but this gear-shifting momentum cross from Moody is even more sickening. As Moses parts the Red Sea by going from 1st to 8th gear in an instant with a stop and start Hezzy to get him a full head of steam going right, before he again stops on a dime, this time momentum crossing back left, which makes Landry Shamit play Twister. Moody then maintains the collectedness after his highlight to go right into his trigger and knock it down. A beautiful move. Overall, Moody's poise was telling, as we all saw why so many Warrior fans wanted him to have a bigger role entering this game. We're all hoping Wiggins gets back ASAP, because Andrew means everything to this team. In terms of Moses though, given all the adversity he's dealt with consisting of being funneled out of the rotation, I'm extremely happy for Moody given he's a good human being but I'm just as impressed with this grizzled third-year pro's stay-ready approach. Based off how he smoothly stepped up, Moses was sticking to his routine in terms of putting in reps, even after being buried in the depth chart, and the flow gathered in those workouts came to fruition in the nation's capital. One of Moody's two steals, where he sneaks up behind Kuzma to knock it loose before diving into the crowd to save it, triggers a four-point swing after in transition, Curry lobs it to Kaminga. Offensively, Moody making four of seven threes was production that fluidly replaced Wiggins. The dub's opening possession laid the foundation for an overpowering effort in the District of Columbia, as this screen the screener split action features Draymond pass faking to Pajemski, while off the ball Kaminga cross screens for Moody, then Curry flies over from the weak side to back screen for the initial screener Kaminga, and just as importantly, Green waits for this action to develop before lining up and floating in the lob, and it's showtime. The money frontcourt of Green and Kaminga continued to cook, as first it was Kaminga drawing the double from Bagley and finding Green on a kickout from the post, then out of a split action, Draymond finds Jonathan slipping to the basket, where he turns around for a polished post fadeaway. Former warrior Jordan Poole, who was recently moved to the bench, checked in to immediately isolate Curry with a jab right, has he left, shifty momentum tween, and step back in the opposite direction, and the range on JP's jumper remains bewildering. Wishing all the best for this man in DC. Gary Payton II, who in just 18 minutes racked up 13 points, 4 boards, 3 steals, and a block in this game, would show you the velocity of his standing vertical jump. With this ridiculous left-handed putback, before that Gary missed a wide open dunk as the roll man, but the young glove displaying he's in prime condition in terms of his vertical jump is a must-have factor for the Warriors if they want to make any type of run. GP2 was clogging the wizard passing lanes on defense to perfection, while Pajemski kept up his stunning veteran-esque consistency. Peyton, Pods, and Paul combined for seven offensive rebounds. To help extinguish an early nine-point Washington lead, the most criticized Splash brother Clay Thompson hit consecutive jump shots, one of which was off this high-impact cross-screen from CP3, with Kaminga nicely facilitating from the post. Most prominently for Thompson, he lighted up during his favorite 12 minutes of the game, being the third quarter dropping four triples in this frame, which all came in a three minute span as leg sleeve Clay was going off. KT would lead the game in scoring with 25 off the pine and post game take pride with a great statement about his new role. Some of the greatest to play this game have been six men in their career. Thompson's led the Warriors in scoring in three of their last five games, all of which where he came off the bench with Golden State having won four of those showings. 
Near the end of the first queue, Kaminga got loose in the dunker spot to throw down a monstrous two-hander off a of pod's dime, signifying a 21-point night that saw JK have a star-type impact on both ends. After gathering a tough pass off the inbound at the back end of the shot clock, Kaminga had a savvy drive and dish to find a wide-open GP who drained an automatic yet crucial triple from the corner. And corner three! No, no, that's what I'm talking about! Driving and kicking. GP2 all along for three. A sideline out of bounds where first Draymond cross screens for Clay and then Moses pin downs for Draymond act as decoys for Gary to cut back door from the strong side, just as Green curls off the moody screen which leads to a perfectly executed SOB. Kuzma had it going to open this game, but as the outing wore on, give credit to a DPOY contender in Draymond for increasing his physicality and positioning when need be, which ultimately neutralized DC's leading score. On the other side, Green built upon his NBA highest 55% three-point stroke in the first quarter of games. To end the show, Curry would make multiple tough layups in the lane, before a dub stop and Draymond outlet to Kaminga led to a show-stopping jam to extend it to 16. Kaminga soaring in to spike it! And while some turnovers and missed shots around the basket made it a choppy ending, driven by the leadership of Draymond and Curry, plus the blistering star power of Kaminga and the scoring of Thompson off the bench, the Warriors comfortably held down the fort. After this beastly pods o board from out of nowhere off a Steph miss and kick out back to Curry, Curry would have time to take a dribble and drain a pull up before attempting to quite literally shake his shooting slump out of his system. Moving on to a coaching standpoint, in the early going of the second, Steve Kerr's funky yet effective small ball unit of CP, Clay, Moody, Saric, and TJD before Clay was replaced by GP helped the dubs establish a 7 point advantage. The 10 man rotation that Steve Kerr utilized in Washington, which featured splices of Saric, Looney, and Jackson Davis as your 8th, 9th, and 10th men, combined with the general Kerr substitutions, made this a smoothly coached outing for Golden State. Kerr finally protected a lead, as after a Corey Kispert triple to cut the Wizards' deficit to 12, instead of Kerr waiting around like he would've before the organization committed to him long term, the man in charge made a timely decision to call timeout with 728 to quell the Wizards' momentum. It was good to see Jerome Robinson and Lester Quinones ultimately get their first minutes of the night with a minute plus remaining, completing what was an exceptional night substitution-wise for Kerr. The return of Chris Paul after missing 21 games saw the 12-time All-Star and 6-time Steals champion produce a patented performance against the player he was traded for. The second future Hall of Famer off this 2024 Warrior bench next to Klay Thompson was a game's second best only behind Kevon Looney as a plus 17, while chalking up 4 steals, 6 dimes, 9 points, and 4 boards in just 22 minutes. Paul's first game back was massive for Clay Thompson, as CP's handle, dime dropping, and screening helped Clay lead the game in scoring. Chris seemed fully recovered from the left hand fracture that he had surgery on. While the Warriors close this one out in Washington, it continues to haunt Dub Nation that this team has blown massive leads in the past, one after the next, which could have made them a number three seed. Even still, in the first of what'll be six straight in six different cities away from the Chase Center, Golden State captured their 14th win and the sixth consecutive on the road, the most consecutive W's on the road for this team since the 2018-19 campaign. I want to know what your thoughts are on the state of the Warriors down below. Best answer gets next video shout out in my next upload. Today's shout out goes to JJD. Appreciate the take along with every other. This was your boy D Flow. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video.